Hey, Tech Tuesdayers, it's Rick Yuzzi. I'm here with Carlos Bustamante, our Vice President of uh, Strategic Technologies, and we are continuing in our series on DOCSIS Proactive Network Maintenance. Today, we're going to be talking about TAPS, and some of you cable guys out there that do maintenance may be picturing something in your mind, but that's probably not it. So uh, what you're visualizing is not the kind of TAPS that we're going to be talking about today. These are digital TAPS, probably something you've not really heard of unless you're already involved in proactive network maintenance, and maybe you've seen that in the application. So. Do uh, you want to start there? Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. today's episode is going to be more uh, conceptual uh, to talk about uh, the digital taps uh, that are part of all modems starting, actually DOCSIS 1.1H, but with eight digital taps and now with DOCSIS 2 and above with 24 digital taps. So we're talking a little bit about, again, what Rick was saying, what basically what it isn't, what uh, uh, digital taps are not. We'll talk a little bit more on a block diagram so we can visualize it, kind of theoretical, mathematical. Uh, and then lastly, the application. So um, essentially, why do we care? So we're going to put it down so how uh, we take that information and put it so it's practical and useful within the context of a PNM platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to launch into some slides? Or yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. So as we're going to those slides, I, I definitely want to... Uh, to recognize some of some of the graphs and visuals that you're going to see here are are uh, not my own. <laughs> These are from our good friends at the Ingenious Group at Cable Labs, or one or multiple uh, uh, members. But basically, it's just, this is more for uh, to be able to go and define it. But again, uh, we'll probably go back and put the sources on where these came from. So first of all, digital taps. So so what are they? And what are they not? So essentially, DOCSIS pre-equalization taps, uh, they, they are more of a concept. It is essentially a time delay power adjustment that the modem performs before it transmits back to the CMTS. So this is not, is not a new concept by any means. Uh, this was included back in the DOCSIS 1.1 world, where there are were eight digital taps, uh, starting DOCSIS 2.0. Uh, there were 24 digital taps. And again, these are time-delayed power adjustments. And as you see in this slide here on the bottom left, it, uh, it is, we'll, we'll dive a little bit into more of this block diagram, but it's definitely not what, uh, what we would uh, equate to as a physical mainline tap. Two different things. I kind of prefer to, talk, uh, to discuss digital taps as a sample. It is a sample in time. All right, so let's go to the next slide. So uh, again, uh, this, uh, this uh, I will put sources of where this particular block, block diagram, but just to simplify what we're looking at here, the idea is that the delay element where you see a Z to the minus one, it, it is a time delay uh, that is taken into account between each power adjustment. So this time delay is equal to the Let's see, it's inverse of the symbol rate. So basically, uh, for example, uh, actually, we'll get to the example in a second. So what you see here is z to the minus 1 is just denotes that there is delay in time. And what we see here, we, we only see uh, five uh, taps here. Uh, again, we talked about 24 in the DOCS 2.0 and greater world, but this is just for, for explanation purposes. So the idea is that the taps below uh, in advance of the main tap are called the pre-main taps. Uh, the one with denoted as B to the zero is what's called the main tap. And the ones to the right are called the post-main taps. So just to give you an idea on the, the delay between each tap. So for example, uh, let's pretend we're running 16 QAM modulation, uh, running a symbol rate of 2,560 kilosymbols per second. The idea is that the spacing or the time delay between one sample or one digital tap and the next one is the inverse of that symbol rate. So just by using that example, it's, ex it's an extremely small number. Uh, if, I, if I'm moving the decimal point correctly, it's like 0.39 microseconds. But the idea is just to, to put the concept that the time between the first sample and the next sample is measurable. 
All right. So taking this concept and now putting into uh, and applying this concept is the following. So on the far right, you see a graphical representation from a, a PNM platform. Uh, on the x-axis, you see numbers 1 through 24. Again, 1 through 7 is the ones that were called the pre-main taps or the pre-main uh, samples, if you will. Number 8 is the main tap where most of the energy should go. And taps uh, 9 through 24 are called the post-main taps. So the idea is this, is that taps 1 through 7 will provide the PNM platform user an indication if there is presence of group delay, which we discussed in the previous episode. Again, tap number eight is the main tap where most of the energy should be going through. And taps nine through 24 uh, are the ones that will indicate if there are issues that are near home or in home, or if it's taps 11 through 24 will give you an indication uh, if it's more on the outside plant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's why, we're, why we're doing this. So uh, a little bit more about the, the graph on the far right that you see here is that uh, that red stair step line that you see there is a contribution from one of the MSO members of the Ingenious Group. The idea is that as we're looking at elevated taps, the taps that that may breach this red line threshold, if you will, those are the ones that we're going to include in the calculation uh, of the distance of the echo cavity, which is uh, another concept we spoke of before. Uh, on the bottom part of this slide, uh, so as far as the, the calculation of this, this echo cavity, it depends on a couple of things. Uh, the channel bandwidth is, is uh, whether it's 3.2 or 6.4 megahertz wide, will also be a contributor to this equation. So for example, if you are running 6.4 megahertz uh, channel bandwidth on the upstream, each one of these uh, elevated taps, uh, in this case, breaching the, this uh, red line threshold, will, we will add them up and then it will give us an indication uh, of the size of the echo cavity. Let me, let me stop you there because people may be going, oh man, I don't know how to do math, but um, <laughs> the, the app, generally the PNM application is looking at this information and it's going to calculate the, the echo cavity for them. So it's not like they, this is visual, this, this visual gives them some, some hints and some indicators maybe on how things are, uh, you know, like near home and outside plan are affecting each other, but, but there will be a figure that's calculated for them, correct? Right, absolutely. So the PNM platform should do this calculation on your behalf. This, mm -hmm. is, this is more to give you the under, underlying as to how we got there. Right. Right. Uh, a little bit more about uh, the, the graph on the far right that you see here. Uh, elevated na taps 9 and 10 are typically an indicator of near home, in home issues. Mm -hmm. uh, elevated taps beyond this all the way to 24 will probably give you an indication of an outside plant issue. Right. But uh, yeah, so, so with this episode, again, we're, we're taking the the uh, theoretical concept level of what a digital tap is and taking that and, and seeing how we apply them within the context of a PNM platform. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, and lastly here, it's, it's the concept of equalizer interpolation. The idea is, is that, yeah, uh, depending on the channel bandwidth, it will, it'll provide you an indication of, of how much distance it will add into the echo cavity calculation. However, it's not always a very round number or a multiple of uh, the amount of uh, elevated taps that you see. So it could very well be that there is one uh, elevated tap that is, uh, that is higher than others. And what interpolation will do is we'll look to the ones that are neighboring this elevated tap to see which one, uh, uh, which one is I guess you could say the, the next highest elevated tap, and that'll mm -hmm. skew the number mm -hmm. uh, either a lower distance or, or a higher distance. Right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, kind of to uh, take this, I don't want to say down to my level, but I guess that's what I'm saying. So, um, you know, 
when I was younger, uh, you know, I was one of those guys that put a graphic equalizer in my car because it, it looked cool mostly. You know, you, had, you could put this thing in your dashboard that had these, these sliders on there and you could control the different frequencies in the music. I'm dating myself here, so a lot of people are like, what? But um, so a graphic equalizer, uh, if you picture those digital taps that we were just looking at, you know, it had little sliders and you could slide them up and down. And besides the fact that it looked cool, there actually was a purpose to it is as you move those little sliders, you were adjusting portions of the, the frequency uh, so it would sound better. And in general, you know, in, in general, the point was that whatever room or car you were in, you could adjust the sound so that it would fit that room better. So that's, that's how I see the, these taps. Again, they're, as you said, they're sampling points, but um, the cable, the CMTS and the cable modem decide where those need to be adjusted so that the signal can be improved for the, the conditions that right. are there, right? I guess going with that example, the, the listener to this music mm -hmm. is the CMTS. Right, it's yeah. saying, and it's instructing its child, the modem, tweak it in, in, the, in these particular places to, uh, for the benefit of the CMTS so it could demodulate uh, appropriately when mm -hmm. he receives the message. Yeah, so uh, that's it. So digital taps, I'm gonna see if we uh, have any questions. I think we blew everybody away with that, so no, <laughs> no questions. Uh, so again, uh, thanks for joining us. So next week, uh, next Tuesday, this time, we're gonna be talking about VTDR and TDR, that's right. which are um, going to be talking a little bit about those echo cavities that Carlos was talking about, distances, and maybe a little bit of how those are calculated, and then what you can do with that information in a PNM tool. So, excellent, right? Okay, all right. Well, great. So we'll see you next week. Remember, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd like to know whenever we're online, broadcasting live, or whenever we post even a recorded video, and then click the little bell to make sure that you get notified when we are online. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Thanks for joining.